Good evening. Exactly two weeks ago, I came again into your homes to outline a roadmap for easing the restrictions put in place to help contain the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in our country. I indicated that it would be a phased approach involving a selected list of public gatherings based on their risk profile, socioeconomic impact, and most importantly, our capacity to enforce and to respond in the event of a flare-up in our number of infections. Since then, we have had some of our religious institutions opening their doors to worshippers while respecting the limits of numbers and maintaining the strict protocols announced. Others have decided to remain closed until further notice. Private burials are taking place. Marketplaces, public transport, including domestic air transport, restaurants, hotels, individual and non-contact sports, and our constitutional and statutory bodies are conducting their activities in accordance with social distancing and the relevant hygiene protocols. From tomorrow, Monday 15th June, the last batch of institutions in this phased approach, our educational institutions, will begin to reopen with final year students in our tertiary colleges and universities returning to school to prepare for and take their exit examinations. As has been stated, final year senior high school SHS3 students, together with SHS2 Go Track students, will resume on 22nd June and final year junior high school, JHS3 students, the week after, on 29th June. The decision to include our schools in phase one of the easing of restrictions was taken advisedly. Some argue that we're putting the lives of our students, teachers, and non-teaching staff in danger by this reopening citing the examples of other countries who have done so and recorded spikes in their infection case counts. I've stated on several occasions that there is no one-size-fits-all approach to the resolution of this pandemic. We have our own unique situation in the country, and we have always taken that into account in dealing with this disease much as we are prepared to learn from the examples of others. Fellow Ghanaians, over the last three months, every aspect of our national life has been affected by this virus. We've had to take deliberate steps to ensure that our society, in the face of the pandemic, is able to function and continues to strive to deliver the results of progress, prosperity, and development for which we all yearn. Saving lives, jobs, and livelihoods, revitalizing our economy, and safeguarding the future of our country have been at the heart of this endeavor. We cannot say that because of the pandemic, we're no longer interested in issues of social justice such as education and health. Education, indeed, is the key to the future of our country. The quality of education that our educational institutions produce ultimately will determine the success or otherwise of our nation. We therefore have to find a way of guaranteeing the prospects of the generation of young people who are the objects of education today and who represent our future. We have to do everything within our power to protect their potential and thereby help preserve our future. 
We cannot afford to let the pandemic undermine our chances for survival and progress. We have to confront our present and future with confidence, knowing fully well that we must remain at all times vigilant and careful. So from tomorrow, operating with half the class size, final year students will begin a six-week period of learning to finish their respective programs. Subsequently, for a period of four weeks, they will sit for their ex exit examinations. It must be put on record that some final year students will not be returning to school, as some of them, through virtual means, have already sat their exit examinations. Prior to their return to school, government, through the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service, has ensured that all tertiary institutions, public and private, have been disinfected. Universities, with their own hospitals and clinics, have been equipped with the necessary personal protective equipment and have isolation centers to deal with any positive cases. All other institutions, without their own clinics and hospitals, have been mapped to health facilities. There will be no mass gatherings and no sporting activities. Religious activities under the new protocols will be permitted. Social distancing and the wearing of face masks must become the norm on campus. To aid in this effort, a total of 600,000 face marks has been distributed to the tertiary institutions. This is to enable every student, teaching and non-teaching staff, to have three use reusable face masks. In addition to this, 1,700 Veronica buckets 200,000 liters of hand sanitizers, 3,400 liters of liquid soap, and 900 thermometer guns have been distributed. With the transportation and delivery of these items being overseen by the special logistics team of the government committee, chaired by the sagacious, experienced politician, the senior minister, Honorable Yawa Safumafu, that is supervising the reopening of the schools. I met with the vice chancellors of the universities, both public and private, last Tuesday, who pledged that they would cooperate to ensure that this exercise is effectively undertaken. And I thank them very much for their cooperation. Our intention is to secure the lives of the nearly 200,000 students, lecturers, and non-teaching staff who will be returning to campus from tomorrow. And I appeal to them also to do their bit to help us succeed. I urge them to adhere to enhanced personal hygiene and social distancing protocols. Wash their hands with soap under running water. Refrain from shaking hands and wear their masks to, in, and from the lecture halls and on the campus generally. Fellow Ghanaians, I have to address a matter which has to deal with our case count, especially in recent weeks, and which has given cause for anxiety. The increase in numbers indicates that the virus has spread and continues to spread. We have to bear in mind at all times that the more people we test for the virus, the more people we are likely to discover as positive and thus have the opportunity to isolate and treat them. If we do not test people for the virus, we will not find the persons who are positive, let alone isolate them from the population and treat them and prevent them from spreading the virus. For example, 
the total number of tests that we have conducted in Ghana with a population of 31 million, 254,331, is one of the highest on the African continent. Furthermore, many countries in the world, including several of the developed economies, are not implementing a policy of enhanced contact tracing. And this makes our data qualitatively different and more effective in the fight against COVID-19. Indeed, the success of our tracing, testing, and treating will lead, in the end, to a reduction in the number of cases. That is what we're working for. Understandably, much focus has been placed on the rise in the total number of confirmed cases. As at midnight of 13th June, the total number of positives, cumulatively, stands at 11,964. Out of the 254,331 tests conducted, we have a total of 4,258 patients who have fully recovered, have been discharged, and are now free of the virus. So our scrutiny, in effect, must be on the number of active cases, i.e. people who remain on our books as still positive. Hence, as things stand now, the total number of people with the virus, that is active cases from our tests, is 7,652. Our positivity rate i.e. the ratio of positive cases to total tests conducted, stands at 4.7%. In our hospitals and isolation centers, we currently have 13 persons severely ill, six persons critically ill, with three persons on ventilators. Mercifully for us, by the grace of God, the number of COVID-19 related deaths, sad though each death is, continues to remain very low, one of the lowest in Africa and the world. With 54 deaths currently reported by the Ghana Health Service thus far in Ghana, the ratio of deaths to positive cases stands at 0.4% compared to the global average of 5.5% and the African average of 2.6%. The number of severe and critically ill also continues to be low. I am relating all these figures not to engender any false feel-good factor, but as statements of fact that must provide the context for us when we examine our figures. If indeed we are to be guided by the data, then we must look at the data in all its ramifications, not just one particular aspect of them. That is the proper way to do justice to the data. I'm thus in no way suggesting that we should let our guard down and throw out of the window the efforts we have made in bringing us this far where we have become a reference point for many in the handling of this pandemic. On the contrary, as we begin to ease the restrictions, we must be even more disciplined in our adherence to the personal hygiene and social distancing measures we have become accustomed to. We must keep fit and we must continue to eat our local foods to boost our immune systems. This is how we can prevent our healthcare services and our heroic healthcare workers from being overwhelmed due to an increase in demand for hospital care. Nevertheless, I implore you to pay attention to your health. When you begin to experience symptoms such as fever, persistent cough, bodily pains, loss of taste and smell, and difficulty in breathing, seek immediate medical attention 
at the nearest health facilities. I remain concerned about the stigma associated with this disease. Stories of persons who have recovered from this disease and being shunned by their own relatives and communities are a source of considerable worry to me because they undermine our efforts to fight it. There is nothing shameful about testing positive. We do not have to lose our sense of community because of this pandemic. Government, through the Ghana Health Service, continues to monitor on a daily basis the spread of the virus and has benchmarks of health outcomes which define the mitigation measures that must be pursued to curb the spread of the disease and enable us to reassess the easing of restrictions. It is important for me to remind residents of the Great Accra and Ashanti regions where the great majority of cases have been recorded and in the western and central regions where we're seeing an increase in infection cases to continue to adhere strictly to the social distancing and enhanced hygiene protocols announced. With the doctors and scientists telling us that the virus is transmitted from human contact through talking, singing, coughing and sneezing, which results in sending droplets of the virus from one person to another. Residents of these four regions, and indeed all Ghanaians, must remember that the wearing of masks is now mandatory. Leaving our homes without a face mask or face covering on is an offense. The police have been instructed to enforce this direction, which is the subject of an executive instrument. Let me repeat, our survival is in our own hands. If we are lax and inattentive, we will continue to have serious challenges with the virus. If we are mindful and self-disciplined, we have it in us to defeat this pandemic and help return our lives to normalcy. I appeal to each and every one of you for your help in this regard. That is the surest way to realizing our collective vision of building a new Ghanaian civilization where the rule of law is not a slogan, but a directive principle of state development, where we deliver social and economic transformation that has a meaningful impact on the lives of all of our people where a strong and vibrant economy creates jobs for the masses of our young people and in the process creates a society of opportunities and aspirations for all, where we are no longer pawns nor victims of the world order and where the vision of our founding fathers of a free, progressive and prosperous Ghana is attained. Let us together rise to the occasion and fulfill our common destiny. We can do it. And you know, if you're a chineco, you're a man who's <laughs> for a one by the way, you know, but school, I got to share on social at Twato. University for the Kochina. SHS 3. The SHS2 go track for is a back call or China now watch it. JS3 for also back call now watch it. It did so. Oh, 42. Me mamunina tia CSA. Is she say yeah? Biara a was a yeah yeah. The boy a man who buy. I buy a yeah. Miss Ramu. Any a ma. And cause indeed she say ah a dear bad boy who buy no so no young couple and aroma into me a yes I are in free and so 
and you may catch a war. Or be fair, na a bag be school na Buy a school, na a magma. I mean, like be woolue. University B buy a war. The SHS three, SHS two go try B, buy a what's a Uchi. JSHS three B, buy a school, Uchi and Yomni. Me small, in your fair and your way, I care. What took by Jenny fair or Juba? You walk our ba, me a baha will be a fair, I a school, the Sanico Behi. Me panify. Walk a will be a fair, a bomodi. Ni ni bi efe ni nke ye ye anu. Ni jimo dromo waka neke helane aje wante. In conclusion, fellow Ghanaians, permit me to pay brief tribute to the memory of an old and valiant colleague in the struggle of the new patriotic party and in the work of the Akufuado government the mayor of Sekendi Takradi Metropolis, the chief executive of the Sekendi Takradi Metropolitan Assembly, Honorable K.K. Sam, Aja Sam to me and many, whose efforts in enforcing social distancing protocols of the Sekendi and Takradi markets were recently highly commended by me, and who sadly passed away on Friday as a result of a COVID-19 related death. May his soul rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Almighty until the last day of the resurrection when we shall all meet again. Let us also wish our hardworking Minister for Health, Honorable Kweku Ajima Menu, MP for Doma Central, a speedy recovery from the virus which he contracted in the line of duty and is in a stable condition. May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.